This is Twit. Okay, so I did not have a chance to hear you guys talk about the the loss of or the the escape of the uh, uh, the secure enclave key. Yeah. So I'll explain what you know my take on it, and then I, I I'd like you to uh, add what you I'll, guys discussed I'll echo on Mac Renee's break. thoughts on it. Yeah. So, okay, Apple had been keeping a secret. Um, it's unclear so far how important keeping that secret had been, but it is secret no more. Uh, we do know that cryptographic security does require some secret keeping. And as our listeners, our longtime listeners will know, because we've, we've discussed this in the past, the breakthrough, which was made quite some time ago in cryptographic maturity occurred w w when we switched from keeping algorithms secret to developing keyed algorithms where the algorithms themselves could be made public and then keeping specific instances of their usage keys were what was secret. And, and when you think about it, just that, Switching from secret algorithms to public algorithms and secret keys, that dramatically improved security because it distributed and spread the secret exposure risk. Beforehand, if the secret algorithm were discovered, every usage of it would simultaneously be compromised. But now... With keyed crypto, the disclosure of one key only compromises the secrets that are being that are being uh, kept under that key. No one else's use of the same algorithm under different secret keys is compromised. So the point is, there's um, there still remains secrets we need to keep, and this sort of set that understanding that sets us up for understanding maybe what this means. So Apple somehow lost control of their secret, that is what they had been keeping a secret, the secure enclave firmware decryption key. And last Thursday, it was published. That key allows for the decryption and exploration of the secure enclave processors firmware in full detail. And that was a closely guarded secret. And so this is something that Apple has historically tried to prevent. Um, not necessarily because it represents the end of mankind as, as, as we know it, but um, just because it's proprietary Apple code and it's no one else's business. And it could be, emphasis on could, an unexpected treasure trove for curious security researchers and malicious hackers alike. Um, and the research community will doubtless be gaining much more information from it, like from the code that used to be secret that runs the secure enclave. So, you know, I, I began this with a reminder about the nature of modern day crypto. Um, as with all modern cryptographic systems, disclosure of the algorithm is not a huge concern. So that's what we have had now is a disclosure of the secure enclave algorithm. So per se, it's not a huge concern. But there are two dangers. The least bad of which is perhaps the more likely, um, given the general history of complex, unaudited code, would be that combing through Apple's code with an adversarial posture, which as we've often discussed is extremely difficult for Apple's own developers to ever really hold, thus the benefit of third-party audits. Um, those with nefarious intent might discover some mistakes in the secure enclave processor's code that could be leveraged 
into a powerful exploit that Apple could do nothing to prevent. We don't know. But now there's a chance that a mistake could be found. But the biggest danger, and we don't, I, I haven't looked at it closely enough, and it'll take a, a while for what this means to, more, to mature more and, and to emerge. The biggest danger would be that the secure enclave processor firmware itself contains embedded private keys whose security is crucial and whose disclosure for some period of time until Apple can arrange to change them or or do whatever needs to be done could represent theoretically a catastrophic information leak. At this point, we don't know. Um, you know, uh, Hackaday uh, had a nice write-up. They said the SCP, the Secure Enclave Processor, is a security coprocessor introduced with the iPhone 5S, which is when Touch ID was introduced. It's a black box that we're not supposed to know anything about. But this hacker who goes by the handle X-E-R-U-B, X-E-R-U-B, I guess, or Z-R-U-B. don't know how you want to pronounce it. Yeah, uh, I said Cherub. <laughs> okay, yeah, yeah, that's probably yeah. good, Cherub. Yeah. Has now pulled back the curtain on the Secure Enclave processor. The Secure Enclave handles the processing of fingerprint data from the Touch ID sensor and determines if it's a match or not. I mean, that would be fun to look at. Apple doesn't want us to, but still. While it also enables access for purchases for the user and many other functions, of course. The SEP is a gatekeeper, which prevents the main processor from needing to access sensitive data. The processor sends the data, which can only be read by the SEP, which is authenticated by a session key generated from the device's shared key, blah, blah, blah. I mean, the, the, those details don't really matter. There's been lots of write-ups about it. Apple has given us a broad brush, and there was a, 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 a demystifying the secure enclave processor talk at Black Hat not long ago. And here's what was more worrisome. It also runs its own OS called SEPOS, Secure Enclave Processor OS, which has a kernel, services, drivers, and apps. And yes, that frightens me because that means it's not just a simple crypto engine. It's a much more complex subsystem, the code for which is now public. And as we know, security and complexity are, are not uh, are, are, are always in constant conflict. So the SEP performs secure services for the rest of the system on a chip that is the, the backbone of the iOS devices uh, and, you know, much more. So this Cherub guy said, quote, uh, after, you know, disclosing something that Apple desperately did not want to have disclosed and had deliberately kept secret, quote, Hopefully, Apple will work harder now that they can't hide SEP, resulting in improved security for users. Uh-huh. Yeah, that, that's his concern or his hope. What remains unknown is how this Cherub guy obtained this presumably large key. Now, I have a guess. My guess is that it's the same old problem we've discussed here over and over and over. Some secrets can be kept, like a remote web server's private key, because the work it does is done remotely, and the only access we have is over a protocol like TCP, and specifically TLS, where the key is used, but is never, we know we have no remote access to it. And for it to do its job, we don't need access to it. But... Other secrets inherently cannot be kept, like, as we've often discussed, a DVD's secret key, which must be present and in use to play back an encrypted DVD. Or in this case, similarly, the secure enclave's firmware decryption key must also be at least temporarily, transiently present to decrypt the processor's stored firmware 
in order for it to be executed and used. So the key is in there, and it had to briefly come out of hiding. And this guy, uh, I'll, I'll give him props for cleverness, uh, apparently managed to capture it somehow. So uh, what, what, what were you guys talking about with, on Mac break and what, what, what were Renee's thoughts? Pretty much like uh, as yours were. One is that, uh, you know, of course, security through obscurity is never uh, a great idea. However, it doesn't hurt to have a number of layers. Yep. And Apple's smart enough, he felt, not to have depended solely on that. Uh, obviously, it doesn't want people to, you know, bang on the SEP. Um, if they can avoid that, but now that people will be, uh, I, th you know, my my thought was Apple at this point needs to raise the the vo the value of its bug bounty because it's not really competitive. It's it's offering hundreds of thousands of dollars when, you know, malicious actors and governments are offering millions of dollars. And certainly, I mean, I I don't know, but if there were an exploit in the secure enclave processor, and it were to be sold to uh, you know the NSA or a bad guy, that would be Probably a bad guy wouldn't have much use for it, I would think, but they, but a, certainly a, a government might. You think Apple has the money, Leo? <laughs> <laughs> nah, they're broke. So, but it, you know, so it's not a good thing. But on the other hand, it can't possibly be the only security they've got for this thing. You know, they must have other things going on. Uh, yeah. It, you know, and so. Yeah, I mean, what's going to happen now is, and it's happening as we speak, I'm sure, is all yep. sorts of people are banging on this thing, seeing if they can find flaws. As we've learned in the show, all software has flaws. And the more complex it is, the more likely those are. Right. What so, wasn't clear to me is what, and I guess it really depends on the exploit, but what could be done with it? Um, I doubt you'd have a mass exploit that would exfiltrate everybody's password. And what could, what good would that be anyway? It's really going to be one of those targeted, I would expect, vulnerabilities that, that that somebody like the NSA could use if they got a terrorist phone. Well, hey, the secure enclave, the fingerprint touch ID is not protecting them anymore because we can get right to it. Right? Yeah. It could be used I, to unlock I, a phone, I would think. The, the problem is, it's. I mean, I was distressed to learn that it's so complex, that it's an operating system. Yeah, that's with interesting, process, isn't it? Yeah. Processors and drivers and blah, yeah. blah, blah. So, I mean... Apple has no need not to has no need to publish it so they chose not to. I don't think this is the end of the world, but we're not going to really know until the community looks at it. I mean, again, it 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 could be that nothing will be found. It could be that that there are some edge cases that can be leveraged um I, I, we just don't know. It, right. It's a functional module. They didn't need to share it. They And they recognized better not to because it's complex. And so right. we'd rather not let people poke at it. Now, it, as you said, that's going to start happening. And, uh, you know, we'll know more a month from now. And presumably this is all f uh, remotely over the air updatable. And so Apple will change the key, revise I the... I wonder. Yeah, I do too. It could be in hardware. Yeah. I wonder. And if you do change the key, I don't know. I wonder. if Yeah, that would be the best case scenario, right? Uh, although people already have the SEP code, right? Because we've right. They've cracked it's it. It's already out there. I'm sure yep. it's on GitHub. So <laughs> yeah, it is actually on it is actually on GitHub. That's yeah. where it is. So yep. uh, Android had an interesting thought. It would be possible to craft a malicious application that would, uh, because you'd have access to Touch ID, you'd be able to authenticate purchases, for instance, uh, using Touch ID. Maybe uh, uh, you know some faux authentication scheme, so you could have the application buying stuff and you authenticating it with, without actually authenticating. Mm. I don't know. It's it's it's. It, I, I'm, you know, it's hard to think of what exploits are possible, but no doubt yeah. some are. Well, and from a from a from a props to hackers yeah, standpoint, nice job. Yeah. Well, yeah, that, but also, uh, what comes next? Apple has been a little, I don't want to say snobby, but a little, you know, we know better than any, everyone. Our, you know, we're all about security. You know, we're, you know, and so forth. So a takedown of Apple would 
would uh, is something I could see oh, yeah. some hackers thinking, eh, I'm going to get them. They made themselves a target, yeah. Right. Exactly.